Okay, looks like I'm being recorded. So I am in uh, at, in, at the bio farm here, and I'm looking in the bio garden. And I'm just uh, here to explain a couple of things that are going on, because I think it's pretty fantastic. And um, maybe get your comments and um, hopefully stimulate some um, inspiration around this whole notion of organic soilless farming. So what I've got is a 40-foot bio garden. This is our unique design that we've created in order to facilitate growing plants in uh, various methods, various te techniques, and um, uh, with really good quality materials, indestructible, food safe, carbon black, uh, recyclable, reusable, transportable, so on and so forth. This is our bio garden, and in this case we're doing deep water culture, and I'm raising duckweed. Over here I'm doing, uh, this, is more, this is more like aquaculture in a sort of an 18 inch wide, 9 inch deep trough. It's uh, aquaculture, and I'm raising duckweed. And over there I have the same troughs uh, with rafts that are stationary because of the angle of the bed. and we're doing deep water raft culture without mechanical aeration. Now you can call our vortexes mechanical aeration, but they're not going to provide air all the way down on any of these troughs. Uh, but they do a nice job of mixing things up and oxygenating the water and creating current if you pull it one from one end to the other. But nonetheless, my, my uh, point that I want to make today is uh, about organics and uh, the use of organics in these, in these troughs. Uh, firstly, uh, you might want to know that these two tables with two troughs that are 18 inches wide, 40 feet long, are adjacent to each other. They share the same underwater storage tank for nutrients. And we do that so we can take advantage of gravity flow and... and uh, uh, and you know temperature control and underground out of the way sort of space utilization and that sort of thing but um, so these are on the same on the same uh, nutrient reservoir and I can tell by the condition of, of duckweed how those guys are doing I can tell from those guys how you know well the duckweed might do, be doing and and I I just kind of you know put my thumb up in the air and and feel the the breeze and uh, look at the condition of the water, see how it's frothing or not, see how it's frothing or not. Um, and uh, what we're doing is feeding our system organically so that we are using uh, compounds, plant uh, and uh, um, plant products and, you know, animal products, no waste, but, you know, blood meal, bone meal, stuff like that. Uh, and we mix it in a variety of, of uh, biomasses in order to create a, a certain NPK value. And uh, this could have alfalfa in it. It's got, you know, it's got things like uh, um, wood ash in it. It has so on and so forth. And, and this is all to replace the dependency on chemical fertilizers. And so we've eliminated uh, any use of chemicals or mined minerals of uh, any sort, and we rely entirely on biomasses, waste products, uh, uh, green plant-derived products, and so on. And instead of concerning ourselves with uh, uh, managing chemicals and, and nutrients and, and, you know, chloride buildup and having to ever get rid of any of this water, everything stays organic, everything gets stays within the system it doesn't ever uh, you don't ever get a buildup or, or excesses of any things because what we're using is pretty much the same thing that plants want and we don't have to calculate anything but what we have to do is accommodate for the issues that hydroponic growers have when they add organics to their system and this, it can be a bit challenging and sometimes they, you know, folks 
I try to do it both ways, you know, both organic and inorganic. But it's, it has a lot to do with the way the system is aerated and how, uh, what kind of biofiltration you can create in the system, what sort of plants you're growing in the system, and how you ebb and flow the beds and that sort of thing. We like to create an air layer underneath the, tra the trays by, by raising and lowering the water level in these deep water systems. I think that's better than NFT because NFT techniques, NFT method of nutrient film technique has a concentrated liquid nutrient water that circulates underneath the roots and the roots you know, reach down there and by capillary action they share it with other roots and that sort of thing. But, and it aerates the roots, so you don't need to aerate. Um, but I, I, it's also not, you're not, I don't think you're getting maximum uh, root exposure that way and, or you know, ideal conditions. And I think a better way is to have the water completely saturate the roots and then bring the nutrients up to the roots and then, and then the water level drop between cycles and the, the roots get aerated. And the bacteria on the roots get aerated. And so you don't get that biofilm buildup that can wreak havoc on a, a root system of, if, you're, if you don't have proper uh, uh, management of the, the carbon. <coughs> Excuse me, so yeah, the carbon is the, is the issue. In hydroponics, they don't particularly want carbon uh, in the system, so everything should be inorganic. That means no carbon, and typically manufactured or mined. And anything that's derived from plants and animals is has a lot of carbon compounds but sometimes too much and often too much for a, a, a soil a system because you've got the biofilm building up as the microbes are decomposing the organics carbon feeds microbes and it starts the whole uh, uh, sort of food web that attracts all kinds of organisms and that serve one purpose or another in an aquaculture setting <laughs> and in a, in a, a bog-like setting um, and uh, yeah and, and in, a, in this case in a soilless growing setting and we just accommodate for it we're adding aeration to the system or more like river conditions water conditions by creating vortexes and, and a current so there's movement under there a nice steady current a thousand gallons an hour or more and, um, and we're growing the plants here, like a duckweed that's, that's eating up a lot of the ammonia. It's gonna take care of the ammonia, um, which isn't handled by our biofilter bags that we put in there in various places in the system. But what I did is I added 10 pounds of our green up biomass blend, Nutricycler blend. We call it primordial soup. Um, it's a green blend of organic matter, of, you know, as I was describing, plus microbes, plus <coughs> um, uh, uh, things that, uh, that feed the microorganisms that are going to be breaking down these compounds. We're going to get anaerobic and we're going to get aerobic <coughs> in this decomposition. We're going to be anaerobic in these aggregate bags that we're using to, f to, f to support our biofiltration. <coughs> so a lot of uh, a lot of organic and only organic processes taking place here and they're creating inorganics because the carbons get chewed up and then and the minerals get spit out and then they are become plant ready and the plants will be thriving on those inorganic nutrients but the benefit of doing this is that we never discard water we're never building up chloride salts we don't have to measure so much you know you can check your do you can check your TDS and get an idea what's going on um, but usually you can just take a look at the water is it frothing I've just added biomass so we're going to start getting a lot of frothing here but um, and it'll happen over there too um, if you've got too too much you know your oxygen levels are going to drop and your if you have fish in there the fish are going to struggle uh, as well your plants are going to need some aeration uh, duckweed will do fine duckweed will do great that's really do great. Uh, plants over here just need aeration, and they're getting aerated. In fact, they're getting aerated right now, and I'll show you. 
<clears throat> these guys are kind of spent but uh, they will demonstrate so we've got these roots and by the way they look mighty fine even though these plants are aged and and a little beat up and didn't the water cycle wasn't working while I was out of town here for a couple months um, but the um, aeration is occurring because we have an air layer right there and that air layer is increasing to about you know another inch and then the water will come back on and the roots will have been oxygenate, oxygenated the microbes will, will carry that oxygen and do their thing and everybody's happy and we get aeration now forgive the beds like i said they have, i've just seeded seeded yesterday seeded yesterday two days ago uh, so this will become alive and i'm going to get the nutrients uh, restored and everything is going to work out pretty awesome but anyway that's what we're doing we're taking biomass putting it in directly into our nutricycle uh, our, our bio garden troughs uh, it's a nutricycler blend we typically use it to make liquid fertilizer organic liquid fertilizer that we that re is reduced in carbon because we would and we want to do it on a sort of a more uh, more volume and a single unit system nonetheless which i'll explain at a later date um but yeah so uh, uh one way we can also support our systems that have deep water is adding nutrients directly into the system and letting them decompose managing for things that might you know uh, be necessary to account for and um and create magic and that's what we're doing bros this is really a lot of fun there's not uh, uh nothing to be ashamed of in this technique and this approach and it's um, it's been extremely successful and i'll i'll be showing a lot more videos from here at the bio farm in oakland oregon and uh, again thanks for watching please give us your comments love to hear from you and uh, share us with your friends take care